Sorry, big band. We'll come back to you later. Okay. Oh man, this... I don't even know where to start. The last time I did one of these, uh, it was obviously pre-recorded. And... I had a chance to gather my thoughts and talk about what I wanted to talk about before I recorded. But now, we're doing this live. So, this is going to be a, a new experience for the viewers and for me. Be recorded. Where's my shoe? I need to put it on my head. Okay, well anyways, here's the, uh, the main track. <coughs> Excuse me. The project is loaded up right here. Uh... The first thing I'll notice is that this font is kind of ugly. It's not what it was in the video. And that's because uh, I haven't installed the old font from the previous uh, hard drive on my computer. So any font that I used that was on my old computer is no longer available. So it's going to be replaced by this default ugly font. Okay. Um. So we're just going to go the entire video from start to finish all the way to the end and I'll take questions along the way oh man all right let's get started so the first part is the simple I guess I'll just play it back and then we'll talk about it Okay, nice and simple, right? Um, the uh, the background is just a fog that I found. Let's turn off audio so this doesn't go on. Um, it was just a fog that I found on YouTube, and I just slowed it down, zoomed it in to make it a little bit more uh, dramatic. And I think I actually. No, this was how it looked when I first downloaded it. So I didn't actually change any colors or anything. This is what it looked like. Um, that's the background. And then I added text on the front. This was a very simple ad. You just write the text down, you slap it on the video. And then the background text is a copy of the same text, but zoomed in really close. So, uh... I mentioned this in the making of Champagne Awakening, but this box represents what's on the screen, and we can animate this to move throughout a specific period of time. So if you'll notice, the box moves from left to right. So if we match it with the preview, it follows that exact path. This is really easy stuff. Um, it's not really worth talking about too much. So here's my logo. This logo I made like, I don't know, many years ago. And I've been running with it ever since. Uh, this is the first time I've ever put it in a video. Um, and all it is is a blind, sort of like window blinds transition. So I just slap on the the blinds transition, one of these guys, and then it does all that for me. You can actually customize like how many spins there are. You can add many different spins. That spins a lot. Or you can have it only spin once like how I did it. Um, I added some lighting to it to make it look a little prettier. And I also added a zoom in the keyframing. Oh yeah, and this is also originally a, a square, but I cropped it to be a circle, because the normal image is a circle. 
what I usually put in my profile pictures. Yeah, this is, um, it's a very basic effect. It's not really anything fancy. The thing is, like, you can use simple tools if they're implemented very well. So, uh, a lot of people get hung up on adding a whole bunch of fancy effects, but sometimes the basic transition is all you need for something that looks very nice. And I think it does the job very well here. Okay, um, that's that part. Um, I just repeated that process for the last two sort of lines of text in the video. The zoom in is kind of a dramatic. Oh yeah, I guess I should talk about this. This is a, a bit more, a bit less noticeable, but the keyframing in this is a is a lot more detailed, I guess, than the previous ones. So. In order to create this zoom in, I actually start the image super, super zoomed in, right? You zoom it in all the way. It's actually upside down at this point. But you can't really tell because it happens so quickly. The F indicates the, uh, the orientation. This upside down F means that it's actually upside down. So if you zoom this out... It actually happens so fast that you can't notice it. And then I add a sort of waiting point, which is where the image sort of settles on a specific size. And it zooms into that size, and it sits there. And then I zoom out just a little bit on a further image. So if we compare these two points, this guy's kind of zoomed in. This guy is slightly zoomed out compared to the first one. So across this longer period of time, it's going to slowly zoom out compared to the previous image where it just zooms in super quickly. So we can adjust the timing of things by moving it around like this. So if you move it all the way over here, it's going to take a really long time to zoom in. And then I just mirrored the effect on the other side so that it zooms out. And then I uh, I overlaid the second text on top. Yeah. So that it uh, zooms in as the other one is zooming out. This portion right here is actually crucial for that kind of effect. They have to start at the same time in order for both of them to sort of be on the screen at the same time. Otherwise you get this like sort of segmented sort of look where it zooms out and then it zooms in. It's a small detail. Not many people are going to notice it, but it looks a lot smoother like this, I think. It just transitions nicely that way. Okay. And then we get to this part. So this isn't going to be much in terms of technical know-how. But I think this is one of the most important things in the intro. Okay, so about that, um, it doesn't look like much, right? Pretty basic. Cuts out to black, and then it cuts into Goku. Um, the entire point of this is the build-up. So for the last, how long is it, 20, 22-ish seconds or so, I've been building up this smoke all of this smoke into uh, what the viewers expect is the theme reveal, you know, because uh, everybody is surprised at what the theme is. 
or at least for some brief moment. And the cut that I do here, it, it's sort of like a visual slash, what's the word, audio trick that I, I kind of pull. And like I said, it doesn't seem like much. Hold on, let's get the song back. So right here, the music stops. And you're just left with this blank line of text. Um, this is very intentional. I don't want the viewer to be listening. I want the viewer to be looking, to be reading. Um, I want all their attention to be focused on what this text is right here. And then, right as all of their focus is put onto that, boom. I cut out the uh, the text and add in this sound. So now it's a complete contrast to what I just had where you were focusing entirely on looking and now you're focused entirely on listening. And anybody who's ever heard or seen Dragon Ball knows what the sound is, right? It's, it's the classic power-up sound. Everybody is familiar with that sound. I don't need to tell you that as a Dragon Ball, which is why the entire screen is black. Because all I need, all I need to show you, or I guess have you hear in this case, is the sound. And that's enough to convey the message that uh, Dragon Ball is in play. So I could have done this, where I just extend the clip and show Goku right away, right? I could have done this. This is what I could have shown. Does it have the same effect? Debatable. I mean, more or less, you get the same message, right? It's still Dragon Ball, no matter how you put it. But I think that this is a uh, a much stronger way of making that effect as you're watching it. There's a lot more anticipation, and there's a lot more. It adds on to the buildup that I was previously uh, generating. And this is something that a lot of people don't really think about. And it's just a very small detail. It's like a small percentage of quality of life, right? Like, it essentially, like I said, does the same thing here. But I think it more in tune. It's more in tune with the previous uh, twenty seconds or so, and that's why I chose to do it that way. This will be a good match. So yeah, this is this is very very minuscule in terms of the whole grand scheme of things, but. It's about telling a story, and that's the, this is the story that I wanted to tell. Yeah, and uh, Alex brings up a good point that it centralizes everything on Goku here instead of including the background characters. That's uh, something I didn't consider, but it is a good point. Okay, moving on. I think that's enough of uh, that part. Again, the ugly font. I won't be holding back. You'll pay for what you've done. Okay. So this, I've pulled this trick many times in previous PR videos. It honestly irritates me that I've done it this much because I just can't find other ways to sort of be innovative and introduce names and characters. But you've seen this many times before. Um, text slides in, slides out. Characters slide in, slide out. The only difference is that uh, I did add some slight glowing to the outline. But they were a bit flashier. Oh yeah, and the fact that there were two people on the screen at the same time. So 
this was where I got the idea of doing fighting games in the first place. It just spontaneously came to me. I was thinking about Skullgirls one night, and uh, Sway actually had brought up several months before that it would be cool if we introduced two players at a time. And I did brainstorming all the way back then, and I could not for the life of me come up with a good way of doing it. And then just one night, I thought about fighting games, and then, and then we come to what we have today. With the one-on-one -on -one situation where two players are introduced against each other. Yeah, I don't think this is worth talking about really. It's, uh, I've done it before. It's just keyframing images. And so I was looking for songs to put down, and I immediately chose Namek. I just thought it was so flashy and fit the Dragon Ball Smash cross up very well. The nice thing about having two players per section is that I could have clips mixed together, and there could be really cool moments. Where, uh. Hold on. Oh, we haven't passed that part yet. But there's a part specifically. So, like, here. The theme, or the highlight. The two players being highlighted right now are Thor and Wasabi. One of the cool things, I think, is that sometimes you just don't know whose clip it's going to be. And I think some of that anticipation makes for some very interesting interaction with like the viewer and actually watching it. So from here, you you very well might expect a Thor clip, even though this is a Wasabi clip. What? Oh no, that's not good. That's a stop. But you don't know until it actually happens, which I think is very cool. It, it was never that intended way like when I first started this, but it ended up happening a lot more often than I expected it to. Also, this is something I wanted to bring to attention. This was something that I don't think a single person noticed. But this was something I actually spent a bit of time on. I actually don't think it ended up getting edited the way I wanted it to. Oh, I did. Okay, so <laughs> it happened so fast, but nobody noticed because it happened so fast. So I did this really small thing. And this was mostly because I had fun with it. But um, Thor right here, he immediately climbed hazards. It And I zoomed in so that your eye sort of catches that climb hazard and goes perfectly to the next scene. It looked a lot smoother, I think, in draft. Yeah, I think I don't think it actually... I think I actually accidentally removed the edit. It was supposed to be like on top, sort of like this, so that it timed itself better. Something like that. But yeah, I tried to time the, the rise of the climb hazard so that your eyes continuously kept following what was going on. Small attention to detail. Um, very subconsciously noticed, I guess, for most people. Not really something important, but I like to put time into small things like that because they, uh, I feel like... Uh, there are ways for me to have fun with the video, but I feel like sometimes the best editing tricks are the ones that are unnoticed. Yeah, it's a lot harder for people who don't actively like follow us to understand what's going on, but that was a risk I was willing to take. Um... This would not have worked nearly as perfectly if, let's say, there was a dual main character, dual main player, like Wasabi, Diddy DK. That was a lot of uh, confusion, I'd say, for somebody who didn't know Wasabi. Um, but for us, it's a lot easier. Ultimately, I decided that it was okay. Um, I don't know if I'd do it again.
but I think it ended up working okay. Just okay. I like to keep clips as uh, cohesive as possible. And this was writing on that line of, um, I might want to change it up a bit. Okay, moving on. Oh yeah, the random voice lines I just threw in there, just to add a little bit more personality to each clip. They weren't really uh, too intentionally placed, like I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about where to put them. I just wanted to have something to fill time. Uh -oh. Some of them are really funny though. Yeah, I mean, I kind of banked Alex on um, people understanding it. See if you can take this. Finish, Buster. Here it comes. Could lead into something. Up for down throw. To close it out. Lance is raw. Oh. Time to win this once and for all. Beat it. Oh <laughs> okay. Beat it. Oh so this was something I just put in for fun. Uh, a lot of these sections aren't actually done in the order that they're presented in the video. So, what happens is, I end up working on this part of the video, right here, this highlighted part. And then I'll go over here and work on this part. And then I'll go over here and work on this part, and so on and so forth. It's not actually like, oh, I'll finish this, and then I'll finish this, and then I'll finish the next part, and so on. I actually split up each, uh, each part into sort of segments, and I work from there. So what you see is more so like... A small build up across the board. So I'll finish this part. I'll finish the first part of each section, really. And then it'll slowly build up to the middle of each part, and then eventually everything gets finished at once. Okay. So F Profound has something to say about the quotes. Time to end this once and for all! Beat it! Okay, so uh, this was an obvious nod to Dragon Ball Fighters. I think the moment speaks for itself. There's not much I have to say about it, really. It's over. Profound was not sure if that's how I wanted each thing to be represented was by quotes. Um, there's no continuity. Yeah. So that's, uh, that was the problem with choosing fighting games. That was the, that was the hard part, right? So, uh. Dragon Ball was one of the first ones that I started working on. And then I think after that, I went straight to, uh, ah, it was so long ago, I don't remember. Um, but we'll get in, we'll get into like the whole general theme. There, the, so, I say theme, but there isn't really a, a quote-unquote theme. Um, this is just a clip from Persona for the animation. So you're my sparring partner. 
Let's see which one of us is the stronger fighter. Okay, so we're going into uh It's on an Alex part. So we have Persona 4 Arena. So the health bar I just ripped from a clip on YouTube between Akihiko and uh, Yunarakami. And I just masked the health bars out. The time was an issue because I didn't know how to deal with the time, so I just placed a, uh, a blue smash ball over it. And it ended up working pretty well. The problem was animating the health bars. So the whole thing about this section was dealing with the continuously changing health bars. So we have the top, which is the the blue health bar, which represents maximum health. Green, which is high health, yellow, medium, red, critical, of course. Um, they're just colors overlaid on top of the Persona 4 overlay, or UI. And I keyframe them to animate um, the length. So whenever a hit sort of happens on screen, the health bar shrinks a little. Tipper shrinks. And this continuously repeats throughout the entire thing. Uh, green is replaced by yellow at a certain point, yellow replaced by red. It's This is a lot more technical than it is conceptual and abstract. So this was just a matter of me going through every single clip and editing it. So this is why this part took particularly long to make changes to, is because every time I got a new clip, or every time uh, I needed to move clips, I had to adjust the health bar every single time. So that it adjusted to the timing. This this part alone was the part that took the longest out of everybody's part. Definitely. Which is weird because it's probably the least visually impressing one. <laughs> And usually if I put if I sink a lot of time into a section, I don't really sink more time into it to make it look flashier. Because I feel that the idea here was it was cemented enough, I think. What do you mean by a hard sell, Profound? Like hard to understand? Because uh, I knew it's on was going to be PR and I wasn't sure how I was going to do things at the point or at, at a certain point in time. And then when I knew I was doing Persona, I'm like, all right, we're doing it's on for sure. The, the problem with this, the whole thing was in my head hard to sell. Everything about this video was going to be impossible to pull off. And because I obviously couldn't go too far in depth with uh, like mechanics and all that, I could make small nods to things like, uh, or is it uh, where is it? 
Caesar, like that's one out of a hundred people are gonna get that. One out of a hundred. But I needed some way to make. I don't know. It wasn't so much for the viewership. It was for myself, really. Like, this whole part was for myself. <clears throat> and I think that's important. Because, uh. If it's not satisfying for myself, then I can't possibly present it to somebody. Alex didn't get Caesar until a little later. <laughs> yeah, had you not gotten to that part yet? Um, but yeah, this was mostly me sort of pouring out my my own drive to put Persona in the video. By the time I was done with the health bar, though, I was so like drained of editing this part that I just had to move on. I don't think I would have added anything else to this part though. Mostly because I ran dry of ideas. <laughs> it's on as he's the only Unarakami we need. Okay. Um yeah. I think I did Persona second. Because I did all of these out of order, like, it was completely spontaneous how I decided to go about this. I didn't even decide on the order, um, like, these, all these clips weren't actually placed here in the video, they're all the way over, like, here, because I, I work on things in fragments, so once those fragments become a bit more solid and a bit looking like this, like a longer block of clips, then I start putting things into place and I start building. But most of it is just a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay, moving on to Street Fighter. Uh, I had nothing, man. Street Fighter was mo Street Fighter was the obligatory put in this video because I just I did not have enough knowledge of Killer Instinct or um what's it called Mortal Kombat or uh Tekken or anything like that I just had no background knowledge and I wasn't I wasn't willing to put in the time to research those games so I had to go Street Fighter and I got to say man Coming up with an idea for Street Fighter was the hardest thing. There's just... It's so... Classic and so traditional a fighting game that I could not do anything. I was looking to do something with V-Trigger, actually. But I couldn't find... Isolated sound effects for V-Trigger. And I could not find... Uh, animations that I could rip for V-Trigger. Um, if I had spent more time, I could probably craft something, but it honestly would not be worth the time investment to make something as flashy as that for as much time as it would take. Full DBZPR. Yeah, so that's obviously something that I had to accept myself, is that I wish I could do full Persona. I wish I could do full Dragon Ball, but... um. That's not where the video... That's not where my train was going, right? It's not what was on my mind at the time. Um, yeah, the Street Fighter was definitely, um, looking back, the weakest part. It's just... There's such little room for creativity so so here's the thing, Street Fighter, I'm going to make a bold claim and say that Street Fighter, it, its long-lasting presence is based entirely on its character design. 
Um, it's just aside from like the gameplay aspects of it, obviously. Uh, but as a a franchise, um, a franchise that has grown over the past few years or a past past few decades, it, it's just they're so iconic. These characters, right? Like I had to pick the OG Ken outfit instead of the new one just because he's so iconic, right? And uh Street Fighter V was it was not the easiest thing to work with. I copied the uni uh the UI with the text, added a slight glow to the white text, make it look like the character select screen sort of font down here right by Chun-Li um, I didn't want to make it that thin because you wouldn't be able to see it otherwise but I had nothing to go off of for Street Fighter so originally this was edited like this because originally this was where the drop was for Rashid's theme so I had actually cut up the song to be uh, this part right here. That drop used to be right where this is. So that's why this is edited. Um, but I really wanted to have this sort of flashy part. Because I just... So here's the thing. When I find that I can't compensate my creative ideas with like uh, a certain section of a video, I I I need to find some way to make it entertaining to watch, right? So this is more like a an obligatory edit, if anything. It's just the video editor and me feeling like there's not much going on, not much going on. Like it looks nice. I mean, I I appreciate Rashid's theme because because of that moment. Um, but then we get into like all these clips. So, <laughs> and this is where we get into like clip quality and presentation. Shree has some of the fastest clips out of any player, like, by far. They're so fast. They just happen so quickly, right off the bat, like... This, I bet people didn't even realize this was a Pivot Perfect jet, uh, Pivot Perfect up tilt. It just happens so fast, but... That's what makes his clips exciting to edit. And then we have Cheese Bear's clips. Like that are extremely long, right? They're very, very long. You can compare it right here. Here's a street clip. Here's the next cheese bear clip. I think this is also the shortest section in the video. Yeah, a minute thirty. I think all the others were like two minutes. Um, this is because Shree didn't send many clips and Cheese Bear didn't have many clips either. Many clips that I wanted to put in. But it was just an unfortunate combination of Street Fighter and slow clips that really dropped the ball for me in this part. I don't think there was any salvation for Street Fighter as soon as I decided on it. I just, I got nothing, man. I, I tried to come up with something cool like adding UI to the screen, but I'd already done that for the Persona part, so I was like, uh, what do I do? What do I do? Um, This is the, the most disappointing part of the video for me. And that's mostly because of my lack of inspiration for it. If I had another option, I would have definitely not chosen Street Fighter, but... Again, I don't really know many other fighting games, and I wouldn't want to do like a a game. I wouldn't want to do it wrong, you know. I would not want to misrepresent a game because I just didn't, I hadn't played it or 
hadn't seen it. Uh, I also chose two songs for this very purpose. Like, this is one of the few themes that has two songs, because I just needed a change of pace. Um, that's the interesting thing, is that pacing is often decided by the clip pacing. So that's why I always have Shree's clips to fast songs. That's why I chose Ken's themes, because it's incredibly fast. Alright, that's it. That's it. That's back here on the platforms. Um, versus a slower player like Moniker. He'll have longer clips. So I need, uh... I can't really do fast songs because it just, there's, I think I've mentioned this before in the past, but there's a conflicting message of a slow paced clip and a fast paced song. It's just, they don't, they don't mesh well together. Okay. I think that's enough talk about Street Fighter. Also, um, this last part. I really like how this sounded. So that's obviously like the the screen that pops up when you win a match. But the way that I cut it, I I don't know. I really like this cut. <laughs> it sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah, it, that was just me messing with the sound. I didn't really know how to end this, but I think uh, this was an appropriate way to end it. Okay, on to showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. Okay, um, this is. Uh, I have nothing to say about this part. This is just me ripping a clip from YouTube and throwing it on there. Adding, I didn't even add any coloring to it. I just threw it on. <laughs> um, yeah, that's nothing fancy. Oh, there's this page flip transition. This is like, okay, not in a million years would I ever use this transition in any other situation, but it worked so well for this situation because it was such an old, like, film-looking thing. Like, look at how... <laughs> um, Let's see, let's just... Let me just... Page loop. Let me just put this on, on, uh... One of these guys. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my god, yeah. This, this ended up working because of the film sort of thing. Yeah, this was, this was one of the videos where I kind of got creative with transitions. I, I normally use only dissolves and like wipes because those are a bit easier on the eyes compared to like oh yeah this is this is some 2003 stuff right here uh okay anyways um i took the same sort of filmy grain video place it on a back uh put Cerebella, big band on here. Not much to say. I dissolved them in from black to white, or black and white to color. Also, this is the Skullgirls font, but it's not showing up because I don't have it downloaded. And then I actually did this weird sort of triple transition. Speaking of experimenting with transitions, I honestly have no idea. I, I had no, like, purpose in doing this, but I wanted to try something different, and it actually ended up looking kind of interesting. I don't think it was long enough for it to be meaningful, but this is something, this is mostly for my learning purposes, is that uh, transitions sort of interact in weird ways when you do it to multiple images at the same time. So you get this weird sort of cascading effect. Because I could have just faded everything at once, 
but I decided to try doing it one image at a time. And uh, I'm sure with proper practice that this could actually be something a bit more organized and actually look very nice, but um, I didn't really have the time to dive into it deeper. Anyways, moving on. You will be prosecuted to the full extent of the jam. There it is, but yep. Okay, this took me a very long time to do. <laughs> so, uh, I don't actually remember the name of the website that I go to, but I think it's called like the Spriters Resource. Uh, they have sprites for just about every game you can name. Um, they have all these separate images. So this is actually the film that appears when you do a a blockbuster special in Skullgirls. And so I just ripped ripped out the left, ripped out the right, and I have the big band image, and I even have the sort of I don't know what they call this, but the grain or the filter to put on top. And this took me so long to get right. It happens so quickly that your eyes don't even notice, but it there is sort of this weird period where the lines of the border don't fill in correctly, like right here. It's not exactly lined up. But again, the best part about video editing is that if things happen quickly enough, you can sort of trick the eye into thinking that it actually works or looks correct. So even though it's not lined up perfectly, it's okay because we still get the general idea of what we want. Also, um, I just had to do something for Marco's patented jab, 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 forward smash. It just had to be something. I don't know what it was going to be, but uh, I had to do something, so I chose this. <laughs> I also added a uh, small like sepia to it to match the color scheme of Skullgirls. This okay, so this uh, this empty space right here, I actually forgot. <laughs> I forgot that there was an empty space there when I had rendered the video. Um because I I usually like play these I always render like a uh, a preview video and I play that back over and over and over while I'm doing things. I'll have it on a separate screen and I'll just play it back and I'll listen to it many many times before actually you know settling on the final product. But this black space, I actually forgot to do something with. But it ended up being okay because... It's... I don't know, it's a weird... I've done this before. In shorter lengths, where there's like, blank space. Like I'll do something like that. But uh... This actually ends up working. I'd say it's a little long, um, but it kicks in right at the right place, so the drop is sort of like right there. If the drop weren't there, I would have immediately noticed that and kicked it out, but hey, um, serendipity. Also balancing audio for these parts was extremely hard. Because uh, if there's one thing I had to be upset about, it's when sound ruins a clip, such as somebody being completely off topic during a cool moment, or there being no sound at all. That's another frustrating thing. Because if we have no sound at all, or bad commentary, we get stuff like this, where the sound is just gone. And I... I'd rather have no sound than, like... 
horrible quality audio. Combos, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, I have issues when <laughs> people are getting distracted and not talking about the game, and something cool happens, and then oh, their reaction is like completely different than what it should be because they've been talking about something else. Uh, it's more of a pet peeve on my end. Yeah, not much to say there. That's just uh, something in general. Okay, so Combos, yeah, yeah. the PK fire. Okay. So I guess I'll talk about the PK fire after this, but uh, this was one of the trickiest things I have to do. Um, so Marco has two clips that are exactly the same. Uh, let me see if I can actually pull this out. So I'm going to play the first clip, him against Alex. And then I'm going to play the second clip of him against It's On. Okay, so we have... Oh god, we need to get rid of these effects. Okay. So we have forward throw, nair, forward air, down air. Oh, that's not it. Ah, uh, this guy. Forward, forward throw, nair, fair, down air. <laughs> it's the exact same combo. Needless to say, I was very confused for the first few seconds when I was uh, looking at this. I was like, did I just watch the same clip twice? And so I knew at that moment, I'm like, all right, I got to do something with this. Because not only are they both on Smashville, they're both on Smashville at nighttime with the same exact animal layout for the stage. So they have a, I don't remember her name, but the, the post office lady. And then she's there again. And I'm like, oh my god, this is too perfect. And uh, this was probably the most bold thing, I would say, in terms of like actually editing that I did. But I wanted to make it clear that Marco did the same thing twice. So I had this like really sharp transition to the same combo, the same move, sharp transition into the same move, and then again. This is where it gets a little tricky because uh, he's not exactly in the same position, and your eyes sort of shift a little bit, and you're like, wait, that's not right. Like everything up to here matches up perfectly. And then we get to here, and then it's like, ah, okay, we lost it. Um, but I had I had trust that uh, people would be able to follow it regardless. And I'm never going to have another moment like, like, this is never going to happen again, I guarantee it. So I knew, I'm like, all right, we're going to do something. We're going to do something with this. <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, I could have done it in many ways, but I chose this way. But yeah, it is actually incredible how similar these combos are. It's actually ridiculous. <laughs> uh, it's actually ridiculous. And I'm glad the combo is like long enough for it to make sense like going from one player to the other. Because if it were shorter, it'd be a lot harder to understand. Anyways, that was very ambitious, but I think it worked out. If only barely. <laughs> Anyways, PK Fire. So, uh, I think.
think I've done this before. Something like this. Oh yeah, with Shree lasering. Where it's like, uh, oh, PK fire, oh, PK fire again, oh, PK fire again. Yeah, um, it's mostly a comedic gag to do this three times. But it was actually, I didn't actually, like, cut any of this out. It was just straight into the next part. So it actually was this much PK firing. It's not condensed in any way. Which is pretty silly. Um, one bit about Marco and Choken. This clip right here looks like a Choken clip. But then Marco reversals and turns it into his own clip. And I thought that was really cool. Um, get to more PK firing. And then I, I want to get to the point. I don't want to drag out the rest of the clip because Choken already has so much time PK firing that uh, <laughs> I have to transition here. The funny thing is that this is 13 seconds later. And Mark, um, Cho uh, Moniker is still at the same percentage and then he just gets back thrown. But it looks like no time has passed because they're in the same spot as they just were. Uh, this was more so like things being fortunate for me, not so much my planning. <laughs> Might be a little confusing if you're not paying attention, but uh, I think it gets the idea across. In the end, he got back thrown, regardless of what happened in between the last 13 seconds. Uh, this is a, just a cool clip. This was a bit hard to work with because I didn't want to have the sound. I was actually co the one commentating this, if I remember correctly. Or, wait. There was no sound. Oh, this was the weekly where there was no sound. That's right. Never mind. Yeah, I just had no sound to work with here, and it made me really sad. Bringing recess is over. Cut. I, have to cut. I had to end with a cut. cut. I tried my best to sort of uh, replicate how... The slow mo is in Skullgirls when you when you lose a character, or is it when you just only when you lose? It's only when you lose, I think. I yeah. to had to replicate that for sure. And Marco as Ding just made sure that I had I to put to in the voice now. about my, my people need me. This how the story ends. Is this how the story? And then is, is this, this how the how story, the story ends? ends? Okay, so. This is nobody's gonna get this, but uh, is this how the, story ends? the way that the Skullgirls announcer hold says "hold it," and then it opens into Phoenix Wright, I just oh part of me was so proud of that. <laughs> oh, um, because when I was working on this, I think it was Skullgirls here, and then Phoenix Wright was all the way like over here in the middle-ish and then uh, I, I found the voice line for hold it and I'm like wait a second and so I just had to do this so when I was first editing this um, Z2G had this part all by himself uh, because I hadn't finished deciding who was going to go where. So Z2G was just the Phoenix Wright and there was no Spider-Man moniker. So this was entirely Phoenix Wright part. Of course I had to put th that part in where uh, he fist bumps Cheese Bear and then proceeds to kill him. Um, he did not win that set. <laughs> the Guilty was a uh, a last minute addition. This was actually actually kind of hard because <laughs> I had to mask over each letter. 
and the whole thing is animating so i can't just like put a um a g u i l over where it is i had to like animate it as they were appearing and this is it doesn't look that bad in the final product because it's going so fast yet again the the tool of illusion and video editing it's very powerful but I had to animate over each letter individually. So it doesn't it's not actually the full animation of the guilty coming in, but it gets the job done. I had power shield be advancing guard. I thought that was nice. Bringing the viewer's attention to small things like this is, uh, it's, it's unnecessary, but I think it's, uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It gives people, uh, something to look at. Okay, so moniker clips are actually very above average this time. Like, these clips are actually very, very good. Again, the font is not correct, but uh, this was Phoenix Wright font. This was just an estimate. It was Slam Banner number 12, but I have, I, I have no way of knowing what the actual time this, this clip happened was. <laughs> I had no idea the song actually looped out of uh, the main like Phoenix objection theme. So this was like, I was like, okay, uh, let me find a way to loop it back. So we come back. Oh wait, no, that's right. Because I added moniker to this part, I didn't have to re-loop the song. I just had it run the entire way. I just can't believe how many clips Moniker had against ZTG and how ZTG had against Moniker. It's like it worked perfectly. It was like an actual fight. Alright, this was <laughs> this is just something goofy I wanted to put in there. Um, again, this part was originally only ZTG, so I actually had this part set up to be just Phoenix. Uh, there was no Moniker. There's no Corrin. It's just Z2G doing a good old Phoenix Wright hyper combo. And then once I decided that Monica would go here, then I added the corn sprite. And of course, Phoenix Wright's victory quote. Um, this was your favorite part. I enjoyed editing this one. This one was very fun. Um, I wanted to do a, uh, like a Phoenix Wright hyper combo sort of UI thing, but um, that was kind of hard. I couldn't find any high quality images of, or video footage of Phoenix Wright doing the hyper combo. And I didn't find like any easy way to sort of put characters in the animation for it. So I just decided it wasn't worth doing poorly. And then we get to these guys. So YY was originally my pick for 10. Um, so I edited everything for him. So he was zero, and he had everything done. I actually pulled from the zero announce, um, or recap 
trailer. So this actually extends into Zero's whole thing. And then, I actually had no idea, but uh, he does say short shot at the very beginning of the trailer. Or, uh, target acquired, rather. And it ended up being the same line. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, I tried to sort of mix the Wolverine announcement with the Phoenix, or not Phoenix, the Zero announcement. So if we get rid of these guys, you can actually see Zero and Wolverine in the background there. And I just, uh, I just ripped slash cropped the images to be that way. So that it actually looked like a Marvel trailer. Um, this was like a last minute edition, uh, so I didn't put too much time into this, but, so I originally was going to have this for, uh, Phoenix, but I just added it for, uh, Zero. Just as a nod to the good old Hyper Combo. It was so weird because they're both real. I just th this was interesting to say the least. Yeah, the fact that they were both Ryu, it was uh, kind of rough. <laughs> so my original plan, um, I told Keith well, back when I was still making the rough draft, I didn't expect both Ryu's to make it. So I... My original plan was to have w the one Ryu that made it um, be non-Street Fighter and then have Street Fighter early in the video so that people would expect uh, Ryu to be in the Street Fighter section and then have the, the reveal to be that, oh, turns out they're actually on PR and they're not, um, they're not in the Street Fighter section. It was just a, a red herring sort of stuff so to speak. But then they ruined my plan and ended up both being PR and both being the HMs and since I'd already worked on YY's part it's like well what do I do now? I don't want to get rid of this. It's like uh, <laughs> it was it was there are many fortunate things about how the PR ended up but there are also many unfortunate things such as this. And uh, here's where my struggle came from. I tried very hard <laughs> to figure out how to implement the theme mid-video. So in the past, the original formula was beginning end of a section. Beginning, there'd be some sort of introduction. Ending, there'd be some sort of outro to the section for that player. And it would connect to the overall theme. Then I sort of changed it up for Mario Odyssey. And I was like, okay, we'll just do something like, we'll do some editing in, in the video because I sort of want to give it the bouncier Mario feel. That was pretty easy. I was able to find some inspiration for that. But then it comes to this 
there is none of the footage is touched except for the Persona UI and the Skullgirls UI or the supers. And and sort of the Phoenix right sort of dialogue box there. But that's it. Like nothing else is touched in the slightest. And that's where my struggle was because I just I could not come up with unique ideas for every single part. Because what I could have done was I could have just done the, the game's health bars over and over and I could have done that. That was not that would not be a very good idea though. You think Awakening and Odyssey are the best videos? Really? I was really disappointed with Odyssey. I did not like how Odyssey turned out. And Awakening? You really like Awakening. Interesting. What about Awakening did you like so much? <sighs> Picture implementation. So you mean like the final picture or like the uh the critical hits? Okay, the actual image. So you mean like the ending section where all the players are being listed? Okay, I see. So there's a there's a problem with doing it like that. Um because I tried to copy the awakening of a reveal for uh the Pokemon video. And I think that actually went unnoticed. Because I pulled the exact same image from the movie poster, and I don't think that people's attentions were drawn to that. Also, Um, the image has been less of a focal point as of late, mostly because uh, Airy has been working a lot more independently of me, so I can give him like ideas and such, but I can't really build the video around him like I could with you, because I don't know what I'm working with until I actually see it. And I can't manipulate the image like I was able to with yours. Because like what I wanted to do with Ares' image for the Zelda one was uh, I wanted to have each individual player appear one by one in the final image, but he doesn't work in layers. He drew the uh, the whole thing on one canvas. 
so I wasn't able to sort of work with the image the way that I did with the final image here, actually. That's that's another story. Um, so yeah, when I get the raw image, it's very last minute. And I don't have ways to plan around. Uh, how to present it until the very last day. Which is why I did this for the final part. Is because uh, I had all of this before the final image being revealed. And the intros, you like the intros? I'm trying to remember what I made unique about them. Yeah. Um, the issue with doing it like that now is I haven't found a way to sort of stick out. So you think, so blending Smash with the games? The thing is, no, um, Pokemon, I crafted most of those from scratch. There was only a couple from the game. Um, Tyroids was from the game directly, mine was directly from the game, uh, Pokemon was mostly made by hand, <laughs> which, uh, I'll probably talk about when I get around to doing that one. But the problem with, the reason why I shifted away from doing Smash as the intro is because you're very confined to a uh, the game is limiting compared to my creative scope I'd have to find some way of like, because I really don't like the uh, the perspective. It just feels flat to me, but I think it worked in uh, Fire Emblem because, you know, the, the battles are traditionally like flat. And they could have worked here, actually, for fighting, but, um, um, I haven't honestly wanted to use it because it takes a lot more effort to, to rip all of that stuff. It takes a lot more time to do that than it is to just, um, make something. It's a lot easier for me. to do something that's, what's the word? That's more graphic based. If I had ideas for Smash, I really don't want to use the stage backgrounds as well. Um, I think the, uh, the stage, uh, 
this stage is just... I don't know. They're too familiar. They're too... <laughs> They're too normal for me, I guess. It's kind of a weird way of saying it. I guess it's... I guess I'm sick of Smash is the, <laughs> is the short way of putting it. I'm sick of Smash. In, in a satirical way. <laughs> time to drop Smash. Like, I spend so much time reviewing and watching clips, it's like, that's enough time for Smash with me. Um, if my mods still worked, I might have done something different, but I want to have something that doesn't limit me. If my mods worked, I would definitely use it. Make something I truly dig. I appreciate that. I I have faith that my inspiration will carry me there, but um one of these days if inspiration strikes in that direction, I'll think about it. I have no idea what it'll be though, because uh again I just feel like when I'm working with Smash I just feel so constrained. It doesn't feel as free. Uh anyways, um I can talk about that after we're done with this last part because uh this last part this last part was really it was hard to come up with um I don't think anybody even understands how this last part should work uh this is really basic this flash into rotation it's it's the uh it's the repeat of what I had before uh with my logo and I just layered the images of the games on top of each other to match the drum beats um this was mostly to just match the song it looked kind of cool Uh, but then this. Oh my goodness. This, 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 this. Uh, this was tricky. So, I actually have to go into Photoshop for this. Because this was... Oh my gosh. <laughs> um... This is not how you would expect this vi this sort of section to work out. Oh no, where is it? Here we are. Okay. Uh, don't resolve. Okay, so this is uh the image for the final part. So we have this, the names, we have the stock icons, and I'm just going to remove all the icons really fast. Where's Roy? Where's Roy? Okay, so this is what it looks like at the start of the video. So this is the base image. So it zooms in. It's sort of distorted. It has this deform, so it's like skewed, so I can skew it back and forth. Um, but I skewed it in such a way that it looks like it's sliding in on you. So it zooms in 
like that. Also, these images are just, they're really quick fades in and outs, so that it looks like they're just flashing to match the song. Um, but yeah, this is the main, this is the part that took the most technical time. So this slides in. I actually made a mistake, it kind of cuts off right here at the corner. Um, so these images fade in. Uh, the stock icons, rather. And you would think I just like sort of put them on the screen like I normally do, but that's not how this works. So this actually, what happens here is I take the original image, I add on the stock icons that I want to add. So I wanted to add Roy and um, Arth. So I'll do this, I'll render this image, without all the names obviously. I'll render the image, and then I'll have this new image on top of the previous one, with the same animations as the first one. So this entire image is animated to zoom in and move in such a way. I copy the transformations, the, the zooming and all of that, to the new image. So now this image has Roy and Marth. And so now this fades in on top of the previous one. And then I have the names separately. The names, here are the names. And they fade in on top of that. So basically what we have is four different images on top of one another fading in so that it looks like a full image. And I repeat that for the rest of it. But this is like Figuring out how to do this was, it was a challenge. Because I could have just rendered this whole thing, but I wanted to make it a bit more. I wanted there to be motion instead of just being static. So this whole thing is just one, or this whole video here is just one image being manipulated in many different ways. And it's kind of interesting because it actually looks like a full-on video by the end, but they're not—they're just still images getting put on top of another. This is where it's actually just one still image. And that is where it stops being hard. <laughs> I honestly had no idea what to do with this image when uh, Ari showed me, so I just... This is full off. It's not really meaningful. Anyways, that's all of that on the technical side. Oh god. You have a picture of what you thought the picture might have been? Okay. Yeah, Ari hasn't been, uh... He hasn't been able to do the full illustration, so if I had something like that, I'd definitely incorporate it in. 
but if I have no information of what it is, then I don't really have a basis to work off of. Uh, I am going to need to figure out something for the next one. Because now that you mentioned that, I need to... Hmm. I just... I need a new way to... Hmm. I wonder if I can grab, like, that Smash model viewer. Tagged me? Okay. Let's see. God. Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> nah, yeah. If only it were something like this. Um. Yeah, it's the image is no longer something I can guide. It's all down to Aerie. Stick with one theme, you think? Oops. Yeah. No, yeah, I've talked to him, but he's just genuinely unable to come up with something. Uh, like, he he just doesn't have time to do the full illustration. Like, I've told him, I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to get something that's that looks like this. It's like... It takes a lot of time for him. I think... Ah, <laughs> uh, nah, nah. It's, it's too early to decide on something like this. Uh... Yeah, I didn't say anything. I was gonna say that he might be more motivated to do something if it's in a style he's familiar with. Anybody rewatching this, take that as you will. <laughs> oh, well, now that you mention incorporating Smash again, I just wish. No, there's no way. Uh. Dota theme. <laughs> if I can come up with something. But I think you you may have a uh, reminded me of some very important things that I did in the first video that
might carry on in the future. Because there are some some things that I'm thinking about right now that uh, I could very well incorporate. The one thing that I love from Awakening is the ending. That's my favorite part from that video. I tried to replicate that in uh, different ways, but without a strong image to work with, the, the same concept doesn't work. Let the music complement the clips. Yeah, that's... I feel like that's something that I uh, always tell myself to do. Yet it's so, it's so hard with cheese bear. <laughs> it's so hard with cheese bear. I think it's just, uh, that's me forcing my own editing style into something instead of uh, letting it take me where it goes. Cheese bear clips. Yeah, the, that's a good point. That there's no editing and awakening. Um, like I said, uh, that's one of the reasons why I didn't really like uh, Champagne Odyssey is because I filled it with so much stuff. Because I felt like I, I just didn't feel very comfortable with Mario as the theme at all. You liked Awakening most as well, Shri? Interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll think about that more then. Because, uh... These last videos have been... a struggle. They have been way too difficult for me to come up with ideas for. I pushed them out in way less time, but... it was not easy. Nothing wrong with going back to the basics. <sighs> you guys you guys make a good argument. Make a good argument. Um I I am actually of the the kind of person to like keep it plain. But, uh, yeah, as of late, I just, the discomfort with making them have been, uh, sort of making me feel pressured to do something. And that's, that's sort of where my problem lies, I guess. So, maybe, maybe it's time to breathe a little bit. I do have a, a bit of a summer to work with for the next one. I have a lot of time to think. Uh, 
Oh god. Okay. If you guys have any suggestions, I will be making the next one at some point in time in the future. I'm gonna need to find something though. Something something that's something to really dive into. I haven't really like <laughs> Dota theme. Oh god. How'd that even work? <laughs> You're gonna yell at me in Discord? <laughs> the combinations are endless. Oh god. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And when it's something... Genius. Then I can finally say that I'm like, okay. I'm satisfied with this. Because this could very well be, this one or the next one, could be the last Smash 4 PR video. And I want to end on a good note. I want to end on a good note. Check Discord. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. I You know, it's that completely slipped my mind until now. Maybe that's what I do. Maybe 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 in some universe I have some ideas for it. Oh god, okay. There's there's a lot to work with. Danganronpa. Okay, let's let's uh let's close things out here. Um, this has been a very long stream. <laughs> this is this took way longer than I thought it would. It's almost two hours now. Um, hopefully you learned something from this. It took a little dive into the mind of the maker of these videos. That's just Champagne Arena. I'll probably get to making one of these again for the previous ones. I don't know when I'll get to it. I, I really have no idea. These are, are hard to make on their own as videos because I have to record myself like working on the software itself and then I have to add footage from the video and oh, this was actually a lot easier for me. This was kind of fun. Uh, if anybody wants to see it live again, let me know, because this was enjoyable. Uh, but until the next time we do this, thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time, and hopefully I won't let you down with the next PR video. Alrighty guys, see you around.